Hi, in this video, we are going to look into the life and story of Manika Vanchikar, one of the four Shiva saints that we've read about or heard about till now. Now, Manika Vanchikar was very, very famous for what is known as Thiruvasagam, highly popular both in India and internationally. And so going back in time again, we don't know when Manika Vachagar actually lived, 9th century or 8th century, but we know for sure he lived. And there is this town near Madurai. So if you see in the map, Madras is north, Chennai is north. And you go a little more south, Madurai was one of uh, a very famous and rich city for the longest time in Tamil Nadu history. So near Madurai, there is a town called Tiruvadavur. A couple lived over there called Sampupadacharyar and Sivanyana Badiyar. Sampupadacharyar was actually a court minister in the king, the ruling king at that time. And they had a son called Tiruvadavuran. Uh, Madhavuran was also similar to his father, a very intelligent and smart uh, young person. And our king, Arimartana Pandian, was very impressed with a smart person like Vadavuran and quickly lost no time and inducted him into his, uh, as a court minister for himself. And so Vadavuran is also a very honest person, honest minister, intelligent minister, and he did his job very well. Now, one day, uh, our king, Arimardana Pandian heard about uh, Arabian, Arabian horses which were available for sale in the nearby Chola kingdom. And he really wanted to purchase them. And so then he calls Vadavuran and tells him, I want you to go and get these horses for me. And um, he gives him a sack of gold and says, go speak to the dealer and somehow uh, make sure that I get these horses. And Vadavuran takes the a gold and leaves from um, the town and goes towards where he knows the horse dealer is. Now on the way to the to the place he sees this uh, guru who's sitting on near a tree and teaching his students. The moment Vadavuran sets eyes on this guru he just forgets everything else and he falls at his feet and says Guru, you are everything for me right now. All I want to do is just learn from you. And Guru happily takes him as a student and Vada wouldn't forgets everything. His mother, his father, his town, the king, the gold, everything. And he just sits there and starts learning from the Guru master. And slowly after some time, he asks the Guru, I need to do something for Lord Shiva. You have told me so much about Lord Shiva. I need to do something for him. What should I do? You tell me. And so the Guru says, a very good thing would be to build a temple. And Vadavuran wonders, hmm, but I need money for that. I need gold for that. And that's when he remembers, oh, I have gold with me. And he, he forgets everything about the king and his horses. He just remembers he has gold with him. And he says, okay, let me use this gold for building the temple. And he starts building the temple. Meanwhile, there are spies for the king everywhere. Who knows what's happening? They travel back to Arimardana Pandian's court and they tell him that your minister is using your money to build a temple instead of getting the horses that you asked him to get. And of course, our king is very upset about it. He sends these attendants back to him and tell them to go and inform Vadavuran to come back to the court and report to the king about what he has done. And the moment these attendants reach Vadavuran, they and tell him about the king's rule, Vadavuran suddenly wakes up and he realizes what a blunder he's done. He has come here on the king's duty and he got completely waylaid and he's doing something just totally opposite. And afraid and upset, he goes to his guru and asks him, what do I do? Let's take a moment about who this Guru is. It is none other than our Lord Shiva. Just doing some drama over here. right? So the Guru or our Lord Shiva gives a ring to Vadavuran and tells him, go give this to your king. 
and tell him that his horses will arrive. Now, Vadavaran doesn't know who Guru is. He just knows he's a Guru. So, but he trusts in his Guru. So he takes the ring and goes back to the king and gives it to him and tells him that few days from now, on this particular date, your horses will be here. Don't worry, Raja, I have done the duty. And Vadavaran uh, and the king is like, hmm, okay, since you say that, I trust you. I'll wait till that day. Otherwise, you will be punished. Now, lo and behold, on that day, the king's attendants rush and tell him that, King, your horses are right here. And Father Uran is simply, he doesn't know what is happening. All he knows is his guru is doing something. And the king goes out and sees, and yes, horses are there. And there is this majestic person on, in the first horse who gets down from the horse and approaches the king. And Vadavuran sees this person, the horse dealer. He's the horse dealer. And he kind of resembles his guru. But he he's just doesn't know what to do. He just stands there happy that somehow this deal went through. And this horse dealer comes and talks to the king. And they have a nice talk. And now our king is happy. He got his horses. That's all he cares about. He tells his attendants to take these horses and put them in the stables. And he says bye to the horse dealer. Now, let's just look into the mystery of these Arabian horses. Who are these horses? Who is this dealer? It so happens that this dealer is also our Lord Shiva, who is doing a second drama over here. Now, Lord Shiva had actually decided to use all the foxes in the kingdom of uh, Arimardana Pandyan. There were a lot of foxes, right? So he magicked the foxes to become horses and took them to the king. Now the king, the horses in the king's stables are actually foxes. And so that night, another miracle happens. These foxes lose their magic and be, they become foxes. They go back to being foxes from horses. And all these foxes rush out from the stables bruising and hurting all the attendants. And now these attendants, they don't know what to do. There's no horses in the stables. They rush back to the king and tell him, Raja, you have been cheated big time. Some sorcery has happened here. They were not horses. They are actually foxes. And they have gone out from the stables. Now we don't have any Arabian horses. And the king has, is simply wild now. It's just crazy wild. And he decides to punish Vadavuran. Poor Vadavuran, he is clueless about what's happening. But the king tells, okay, your punishment is you got to go and stand in the hot sun, sands of the river. It's called the Waigai River and its sands are pretty hot, especially midnight, mid uh, day, noon. And the king tells him that you have to stand over here. And Vadavuran, he says, okay, I'll, I'll stand there. What do I do? And so he stands over there praying to Lord Shiva with the sands hurting and burning his feet. And time for another miracle. It starts crackling thunder and rain falls, thunderstorm. It rains so much. It, by the way, it was not the time for rains, but it's raining so much. People are running hither and thither. The attendants who are supposed to make sure Vadavuran is punished, they run away from that place. And it's so bad that river water gets into the city and engulfs the city. Now the king has to do something about it. He can't just sit there in, in his palace and be there. He's a king. He has to do something about it. So he announces that each person from uh, each family should send one person from the family to go to the river buns, to, to the river and build buns over there. And so if you see, these are sand bags. In those days, they would build buns, sand buns, so that the river will not overtake the buns. And every family sent one person to the river. But there is this one lady, very old lady, and she makes for a living and sells them and it's kind of a rice cake she makes it and sells it and that's how she lives 
but she didn't have anyone in her family and she's too old to go and do that work. Next miracle, a boy appears out of nowhere and he tells Patti, Patti's old lady, grandma, I would like to help you. I can do this work for you, but in exchange, you have to give me a meal. And the party is very happy, like because she's got help now. And she tells him, okay, go do the work and come back. I'll give you the meal. He says, no, 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 give me the meal now. I want to eat and then I'll go do it. And the boy says, uh, and the party says, okay, fine. And so she makes a pitta for the boy and gives him and he happily eats it. And now energetically, he goes to that place to build the buns on the river. But what happens is, once he goes there, he gets very tired. He's eaten so much now. His tummy is full. And so he decides, I'm going to just sleep over there. And so he sleeps over there. Right where the people are working. And now people are getting angry. We are working hard over here and this guy is sleeping over there. And so they call the king's attendants and tell them, look at that boy. He's sleeping over there. Go and inform the king. And the king actually happens to come by over there. And the attendants rush to him and tell him, see king, everyone is working hard, but this boy is sleeping out there. Can you check this? And the king goes towards the boy and asks him, what are you doing? Sleeping here? Get up, go work. And the boy says, no, 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 I have to sleep. And then, you know, he turns around showing his back to the king. The king gets furious. How dare you show your back to me? He takes a whip and slaps the whip across the boy. And a whole slash appears on the boy's back. But you know what really happens? It's not just the boy who gets the whiplash. Every single person in that place gets a whiplash and everyone says, oh, and feel, feels the lash on their back. Even our king. Our king is also feeling the pain on his back. And while everyone is looking back, they realize something is odd here. Why should we feel the whiplash when this boy is supposed to get it? And they look back to see the boy is missing. And so that's, again, another drama by our Lord Shiva. This, all of this drama is meant to make this king realize, King Arimardana Pandian realize that Vadavuran should be let off, free him. He is not meant to be here. And so the king goes all the way to Vadavuran and asks him for his forgiveness and tells him, please be on your way. I will no more hold you, um, uh, you know, in chains. Please go. And he apologizes to him. And now our Vadavuran is free. This Vadavuran is none other than our Manikavachagar. He got the title Manikavachagar. And he, after that, he would go temple after temple and sing the praises of Lord Shiva. And his poetry is just beautiful. And finally, um, he was also known to be in Chidambaram, Tillai. And that's where he passed his final days. He also lived a very short life. But his famous, famous work is called Thiruvasagam. And Thiruvasagam, a hundred years back, by the way, was also translated by this person called Geo Pope. And Geo Pope made it known in English for the rest of the world. And so there were more people who got to know about Thiruvasagam and the power of Manika Vachagar's poetry. And again, this got so famous even back then that it was added to the, as an eighth volume of Thirumurai. Now, Manika Vachagar was not only responsible for Thiruvasagam, he also wrote something called Thiruvampave. And that is another amazing literature by itself. And so this is the story of the very humble, smart, and intelligent, but devoted uh, person called Manika Vachwa. Thank you.